Ooh, ooh. Get off the wall, get off the wall. Don't cut my line. Another catfish. You betcha. Huh. You're hired, she said. You're hired. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Look at that. Houston got him a big bluegill. He's a silent fisherman. He's taking Jacoby's job or what? Mum's the word. Keep it hush hush. I just came to catch fish. You just came to catch fish? Yeah. <laughs> well, what's up, guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead, and we are back for another video in Louisiana. Third and final video of our little series here with Jared from outside the levees. We're just going to do a little bluegill fishing. I, I told him the other day, I said, sometimes simpler is better. And everybody loves bluegill. It seems to be a uh, a very popular little fish for people. I, I enjoy catching them. It's a lot of fun. We're not doing anything super fancy. Got some light tackle. We're fishing with, a, fishing with some night crawlers. Well, I was going to show you, but it's hooked on my reel. There he is. Ow. Hey. There he is. A little night crawler on a jig under a bobber. Nothing fancy, but everybody loves bluegill. We're not going to be doing a catch clean and cook today jared probably take some home with him to feed the family but uh it's our last day in louisiana dj i know it's been fun it has been you, have you enjoyed the alligators i mean not so much <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling you what it's it's so much fun just getting to experience something different from home and uh you know i posted i posted some pictures of a uh, of you know, first day or two of our trip on Facebook and with Jared's uh, Go Devil boat here. And a couple people were like, why are you in such shallow water? Or why is the water so muddy? And guys, that boat, this boat is designed. It's a shallow water motor that's designed to go basically in mud with an inch of water. Houston got a fish? Well, I totally missed that catch on video. Let's see him, Houston. I didn't think we were bass fishing back here. We're supposed to be catching monster bluegill. I've seen a bunch of videos on Jared's channel. He, uh, he goes after the bluegill. Bass. Many monster bass. Oh, we're, we're micro bass fishing. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Micro monster bass. All right, we'll let him go. Hey, you got to pay attention where you're swinging your rod, buddy. Well, you had Jared me. ducking and wrapping around my pole. Jared, is that your, uh, your other, is that your other boat? Yeah, that's my rig runner. Uh, I use that one for my big uh, cookouts. Does that one have we'll a... Do, yeah, we'll pull from fish for about 500 people on that boat right there. That one's probably got like, what, six or eight Go Devil motors on the back of it? Yeah, so if, if you two don't work out, I'm good to go with that. <laughs> that's a big boat. Woo, what was that out there? Probably one of them stinking alligators. Everywhere we've gone for the last three days has been nothing but alligators, nothing but alligators. There's one. There he is. Get off that pile and don't cut my line. Woo, look at there. It's that simple. Would you like a bite, madam? No, not so much. No. Pretty little gill, though. Pretty little girl. Jared's got one. Hell, now, you good. know, that's a, uh, it's not what we call a monster bluegill. I don't know, maybe down here in Louisiana, you guys grow them a little differently, but, uh, you know, your video, back. the other day you said that was a hand-sized bluegill. Did you mean you could just, you know, cover it with your hand when you close your hand around it? Hey, I was watching a video the other day, though. There's a, a channel in Texas, it's called 903 Fishing, and he was legitimately catching bluegill the size of a paper plate. He took a paper plate out of there, and it would, the tail would hang off the other side of the paper plate when he laid it on there. They were monsters. Jared got one. He got the monster. He got the Bayou Monster Bluegill here. Look at him. Bending that rod over the old Zebco push button reel. I mean, you don't have to do anything fancy when no, you're bluegill we fishing. Get the in. We gotta get the way in. Let's go. <laughs> uh, what is that? A, like a probably a $9 Zebco? That's a uh, Podna Special. My Podna Kelly Watson. When I was. Made a Facebook post seeing if anybody had some youth rods and reels they didn't want anymore. Just when Jack and them were getting to the right age, Kelly Watson gave me that old buddy of mine. 
Nothing fancy in the bluegill world. Whoa, I got fish slapped. Houston got a fish. Golly. Houston got a bluegill. That's a pretty good one right there, Houston. Take it, little buddy. You got it. Got him. Look at there. They are feisty little fish for sure. He was hugged up right against that piling. Oh, Houston's on. What's he got? What's Houston got? Got a fatty. Oh. Stump knocker. Is that rare? I have no idea. I don't know what a stump knocker is. I don't know. We get red ears in Oklahoma, but that's not a red ear. Red spotted something. It's definitely not a red breast. Red spotted. I don't know, folks. You tell us down in the comments. This is a little bit different. Real dark colored. You know, to me, the generic term for everything is a bluegill. Right. We used to always call them perch. Yeah. That's what everybody in Oklahoma calls every Same sunfish here. is a perch. Here and they get on a but on YouTube, you can't call that a perch because nope. it's not a perch, but that's just the common term. But hey, here, watch out. Watch out. Oh. Tell me what this is, guys. Is it a, a dark colored bluegill? Is it a different species altogether? I don't know. It's outside of my wheelhouse. Houston got a bigger one? Uh, whatever it was. I mean, it was. Oh, he got a monster bluegill. Oh. See, now that's what we came for. Okay. Oh. Jared was like, ah, uh, our bluegill don't get real big. You gotta get the little ones out the way first. You know, you yeah. Now we're getting into some real size bluegill, huh, Houston? Yeah. Hey, we're still not the size of the ones in our pond. Let me see. This one's kind of close. Yep, he's getting there. Put that one in a bucket. You're gonna make a taco out of that one later. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's peeing on me. Here, DJ, watch. If you squeeze a bluegill, Do not. they'll pee on you. Do not. You just gotta squeeze them just. Yeah. Just right. No. Hey, look at here. Right here. Oh! There it is. That's the first one. What is it? Oh, now that is, that is that cool. That is the Rio Grande cichlid. I want one of them. The invasive species. We believe was just, you know, folks had these in their aquariums. And then they got loose and they're everywhere now. Just like wild oh, hogs and every other invasive. Can I get one of those? Tank whenever my turtle grows out of it. Look at that. It does look like an aquarium fish. Whoop! Yeah, Dropped him. Hang on, I got a fish down here too. <laughs> Still fishing. There we go. There we go. Doubled up. Got a bluegill and a Rio Grande cichlid. I can't put that back. According to our wildlife and fisheries laws, I cannot put that back in the I can put mine back. So you just cut them up and use them for cut bait, put them in traps or something? Uh, they're big enough, they eat fine, you know? Yeah. The, the, the little ones, yeah, we'll just use that for bait. Always, like I said, find myself drawn to the more simple stuff. Like, we could go out and target big giant redfish and may catch two or three fish in a half a day's trip. But, who's gonna have more fun? You know, it's more about the kids sometimes. And Houston can stand on the front of this boat and catch four inch long bluegill and these tiny little cichlids all day long and have a blast. Could we go out and catch two or three big redfish and get some pictures and do a catch, clean and cook on a redfish? Absolutely, it'd be fun, it'd be a blast. But two fish or 40 fish, I'll tell you, he's gonna have a heck of a lot more fun on the 40 fish that are this big. What you got? What Houston got? Oh, oh quick release on a bluegill. Got worms still. I told him we need to switch it up. We're going to change spots because Jared says he's got a spot that's got a lot more of these big cichlids, and I want to catch some bigger cichlids. I want to see them. And Houston's like, we can fish here until I lose all my worm. And I think that was like fish number two or three on that worm. He just won't lose it. All right, on to the next spot. Jared's extra boat. Is it just in case he invites too many friends over boat? That's what I'd call it. Hey guys, I'll make this really quick, but today's video is sponsored by EcoFlow and they wanted me to let you guys know about their Amazon Prime Day sales going on. I think it basically runs from now until like July 16th. This is the River 2. It's a very small portable. You can throw it in your truck. Uh, they have, you know, ones that are expandable and smaller sizes, bigger sizes. Listen. 
I spent, you know, this whole series has been in New Orleans, and I spent 10 days at Hurricane Katrina. After that happened, there were so many people in distress, so many homes and so many people that were stuck without any power, without any way to, to power anything. Now, these didn't exist back then, but that's one of the modern day conveniences. This, one of these can totally take the place of a gasoline generator. You can charge them with solar, plug them directly into the wall, charge them in your 12 volt charger in your vehicle, whatever you need to do. But this is an item. These solar generators are something that will help you prepare for a disaster. These solar generators are absolutely quiet. I mean, every one of these is turned on and you can't hear a thing, okay? Zero maintenance, no oil changes, no filling them up with gas, free energy if you use the sun, it's a, just a clean energy alternative. So just like I've said many, many times before, you can control these things through their app, on, you monitor all their systems, you, and when you buy one, it's one payment and it's done. You don't have to worry about buying gas and refilling it. You can charge it with the sun. So you can save up to $1,500 during the EcoFlow Prime Day promo. Get exceptional Amazon deal of the day offers from July 11th and 12th. Uh, check the links in the description box below and use my code E-F-P-D-A-R-M-S. E-F-P-D arms. To get an extra 5% on all EcoFlow Prime Day sales, except flash sale products. And like I said, this is good until July 20th. All right, the next spot we're going to change up our tactic a little bit. I'm going to go ground and pound, step off the boat, let them guys do their thing over here. Jared says there's a really friendly large alligator that lives over here, so hopefully we don't have any run-ins with that girl. Jared did say the, the theme of this trip has been uh, alligators, 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 so there's a good chance she may be laying in here watching me somewhere can't see it on video but there's a soft shell turtle that has come up right there somewhere if i can spook it up my way oh, oh no it's not a soft shell turtle it's a giant blue crab <laughs> yeah it was a giant blue crab bigger than any of the ones we caught in our nets oh here we go fish on fish on that ain't a bluegill there ain't no way that's a bluegill Ain't no way I got a bluegill. Oh my goodness, I think I got a catfish. Yep. I got a catfish. We just thought we were bluegill fishing. Here, be still. Be still. Look at there. Biggest fish of the day, and something has tried to eat it. Look at that. Houston, look at this bluegill. I'm blue bluegill. Catfish, come here. Something tried to eat it. Oh, dang. It looks like maybe Houston tried to take a bite out of it. Something grabbed it from below right there. Probably another catfish, honestly. I think I beat you, dude. Jared. Jared's on the that is not big bluegill dude. duty now. Oh, no. That is That's a pretty we, good size one. Side by side? Yeah. Do it. All right, go get him. Let's see. Go, get, go get your big That's one. That's not my PB, by the way. Oh, okay. Here, it's your Louisiana PB bluegill. Yeah. Got another one. Got another one. Got another one. I'm on catfish it's duty for sure. Check him out, boy. Oh, those are dark ones, too. Ow. Mm. Ooh, be careful. Be careful. Let it go. Them would be perfect like whole fried catfish right there. You know, just skin it. You ever, you ever cook them like that? Jared, you ever do whole fried catfish? Skinned them and, and whole. I haven't done it. I had so like that's a country folks thing. So I was out in, in the country. Somebody made me that, and it was delicious. I thought Louisiana was a country folk thing. Uh, we're more like bayou. I mean, like hills and and woods. I thought y'all were comparing bluegill. Well, y'all decide whose is the biggest. Man got a uh, sports related injury back there. Yeah. Oh man, he got got scared, he got, didn't he? He got jugged. He got scared. That's what it was. Houston, walk out there and cast just like I did, and I bet you catch a catfish. About six feet off the bank. Hey, you're hunging a rock. You got one. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Got a bluegill. We came down here to catch to catch those Rio Grande cichlids. We switched spots up because we thought this would be the cichlid hole. Turns out it's a bluegill and catfish hole. Oh, oh, oh. I got a bite too, Houston. Take it. I wasn't even paying attention. 
Yeah, I was watching you and your bluegill. He's been hitting something on his head right here. Been bumping into something? Yeah. Can you see it? Yep. So what I did while ago, here's something. I just stuck my rod down there, and he, like, clamped onto the rod. Look. Holy here he is. Here he is. Oh, he's in my line. Here. Woo. Here he comes. Here he comes. Got him. Got him. Grab. Look at here. Fishing for blue crab. Oh, Jared down there, he got him catfish too, looks like. Like they're going out of stuff. Look at here, look at here. Yep, that's a good one. <laughs> get off the boat, buddy. We're tangled down. Okay, hang on, let me get rid of my crab. Catfish Johnson. Oh, there he goes in the water. Fish Johnson. You know what, this kind of stuff, it's so much fun. I, I mean, I'm telling you, we're not doing anything fancy. Like I told a while ago, we could go out and catch two redfish and make a really cool video. But this stuff is what's fun to me. You know what? This is America. I mean, we're on a boat right now, but clearly we can do this from the bank. Like I said, with a cheap little rod and a bucket of worms. Houston's got a fish on right now. Look at there. Another big bluegill. You don't know if you can compare it? Are you saying he's so big there's no comparison? That is a good one right there, buddy. You having fun today? Yeah. <laughs> this is the best fun I've had on a trip. This is the most fun you've had on the whole trip? Yeah. Even fighting against alligators and catching sand bass? And yeah. I agree. Houston's back on crab patrol. He's trying to catch him a crab yeah. with a hook, with his fishing pole. Has he got your bait? He does. All right, let's ready? see. I'm ready. <laughs> you got him. I got one. <laughs> Flip him over here. I got one. Jared. Fishing for crabs. Fishing for crabs. He's uh. He's eating your worm right now, Houston. Here, should I just chug him back out? Hang on. Look at him. Oh, there he went. He oh. stole your bait. He literally stole ate. He ate the worm off your hook. That was cool. And then went back in the water. I do have a fish though. What I got? Oh, this is a big one. Probably another catfish, but it's pretty good size. He's putting up a good fight, anyways. Come on up. Oh, yeah. A little bigger catfish. We have fried catfish for lunch. Bigger. The catfish are getting bigger. That is. Oh, my. You, we filleted and ate that probably 30 pound blue cat the other day i would rather have 30 of these than that one 30 pound blue cat this is just fun yeah you talk about total uh changing plans man i was we thought we were just gonna come out here and catch a few bluegill and some cichlids but uh these little channel cat they're too tasty not to eat you know i mean who doesn't love a good fried catfish and them little half pound to one pound oh, i'm getting about take it what is it run off with it come on he's swimming at me whatever it is is swimming at me oh it's catfish i see it down there you guys probably can't see it on the camera but i can see the catfish swimming around with my jig oh now it's a blue gal oh well i'm not complaining i saw the catfish but i caught the bluegill he must have stole that bait from that little catfish they were swimming around after my jig. Get in the water. Jeez, don't jump out on the bank. Ooh, ooh. Get off the wall. Get off the wall. Don't cut my line. Another catfish. You betcha. Sound like. Sound like we need catfish for lunch, Jared. Oh, hey, y'all didn't see that. I, I got him. How that lifted him out of the water. Hang on, there's 50 more. I'll get us some more. 
Oh, that one just jumped out and got the wall too. It's like they know that wall's rusted metal. I'm on the catfish hole now, man. I'm on the catfish hole. We are having catfish for lunch. I don't care what Jared says. I don't care what Jared wants to do. No, I'm kidding. I do care, but I, I can't, I can't not eat a catfish like that, folks. Save it. Save it. it. DJ said she wants catfish for lunch. Yep. All right. Dude. Got another one. Oh, I lost that one. Hey, the catfish are hanging out right on that seawall, that rusted oh, seawall. I mean, they just... Right where a catfish should be. Right where a catfish should be, yeah. But they hit it and just like explode up and try to cut your line on that rusted metal. Mm. I mean, it's... You gotta put some heat on it. We, we might have to go get the big rod, huh? Yeah. So you can yank them out. It's kind of fun. That one's hitting more like a bluegill, but... Yeah, right. There's one. Finally got a catfish standing out here on the wall. He ain't very big, but you talk about good eating size, though. Just throw, a couple, just throw a couple in the bucket. Yeah. Oh, show. You don't have to go all the way back. But, woo -hoo -hoo. I feel like I'm walking a plank on a pirate ship here. Well, Mr. Channel Cat, today's a bad day for you. Well, we got a bucket full of fish, and the... Uh, Heat advisory was not playing around. It's 1020 and I'm telling you, it is hot, especially tucked up next to that grass. There's no breeze. You know, we have all kinds of problems with wind noise where we were at in the first spot. Over here, wind noise is not a problem. Just a short boat ride back to the ramp, but a little breeze is gonna feel great. I think we're gonna head back, shower at the hotel and uh, meet up at the restaurant and do our little catch, clean and cook in the air conditioning. Cause we don't feel like cooking on Jared's back porch today. It's, it's just too hot. It's too hot. Now, I've never been here, obviously. This is our first time, but we got a mess of fish to eat for lunch. And Jared says the lady in here is the woman to fry up these little channel cat for us. I think we even, he may have even brought some leftover, uh, you know, Louisiana white bass fillets. Sand bass, we're gonna call them sand bass. Mm, I don't know now. Obviously, we, we kind of got some inside deal going on here, but I think I could probably I could probably put away most of a 25-piece fish myself. I don't know. Hey, waiter, waiter. I'll take uh, sweet tea, please. It's got mint. You're okay with that? <laughs> I don't know. You say. It's good, dude. I may have to have some of that before we go. The thing to the right of it. You want pecan? No. Mm. Hey, look at the thing right straight in front of you. That's those tomatoes I was telling you about. Yeah, the Creole. Tomatoes. Yeah, them are big. Look at that thing big by the lemons. Juicy. The sweet tea? Oh, the turtle shell? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Hang on, let's yeah. look at that. We'll show it. Big old head. That was a two-headed turtle. Dang. Nah, I doubt it. It wasn't two-headed, but that was a big old snapping turtle right there, Houston. I've never had sweet tea with mint. <laughs> I bet I do again. It's not terrible. It's not terrible, but it, it's confusing, isn't it? You're like, like I just got to drink a sweet tea with a stick of gum in my mouth. With toothpaste in my mouth. <laughs> with toothpaste. <laughs> All right, y'all, we got our fish cleaned up. That is uh, a few of those catfish, some of the bigger brim. We even got some of the frog legs from the frog that we caught and some of the white bass that we caught. And we're here at my friend Rachel's restaurant, The Fish Shack in St. Bernard. She's gonna show us how she cooks them up. Honestly, the crispiest fried fish you will have ever eaten. I don't know, there's this town where we, uh, another town close to us, they have some of the best catfish ever. But guess what? You didn't think you were going to eat that frog. You thought we forgot about that yeah. frog because we yeah. were going to have him for yeah, lunch the yesterday. Day, the first day that we had it, they they forgot it, and then they were too lazy to throw it back in there later because they didn't want to warm the water. Kitchen yep. was closed. Yep, yeah. so but you're going to get your frog legs the today. Day, they forgot about it again, so well, finally it's a responsible you get. One. Today's your day, and Rachel's your lady, so... Miss Rachel, we're going to go see her and uh, her husband, Brett, in the back and get these cooked up. All right, so you got a wet fish better. I watched this. You did a video here 
um, in this same kitchen. So I do like to roll my fish in mustard, but they it's not just straight mustard. No, she adds beer to it. Mustard uh, and beer. She swears by the barley in the beer, helping it to, to I think, get crispier, I believe is what she said. Rachel can explain a little that, bit. That, mean, that means you Rachel, can't, you what can't does eat it. the beer help do? It keeps some, it's a sweet, nice, it's like a barley in it. I like barley so it's a way of getting barley into the beer but you can do it with non-alcoholic beer also for hmm. all of our wonderful christian people out there and people that just give up on the alcohol just switch it up and wrong with cooking with barley. cooking with a little beer no indeed not and then she just got her own her own batter that she throws them into i yeah. say she I, I mean it looks like you got hired as the waitress and the cook I, well, my goal is to work. So there was an old man, Mr. Jerry Alfonso, who uh, everyone kind of knew. He was a great old outdoorsman. And he didn't drive any longer, so he would hitchhike to Rachel, to Rachel's restaurant and would just make himself at home. Like, he'd go in the back, fix himself a drink, fix himself a bite to eat. And, and he was such a local legend that she just let it play. So my goal is to work my way to being that old man. <laughs> I just want to walk in, make myself at home, make me something to eat. Be like Mr. Jerry was. So well, it, my, this is my practice day of doing that. It looks like you're getting close already. Amen to that. I am starving. And this is so much faster than doing it in your backyard. Amen. And she has an air conditioner in here. Right. Woo! I love that sound. Alright, so Rachel's trick is that if I put that knife on that fish and it breaks like that, it's not quite ready. See how it just broke a little bit, so we're going to let it go just a little bit longer. If you push on it just slightly and it doesn't break, it's done. Yeah. That's Rachel Patton's yeah. trick. Y'all post this stuff on, on Facebook and then I'm like, ah, oh, cringeworthy at the end. Sorry, I was talking to Rachel. Sorry. Alright, we're all done. Oh, wait, nice and crispy. You said dump and then season. Yeah. So you have, oh, there's an extra step here. Yeah. Let's see some frog legs, Houston. All right, Houston, hit that with some season. You got this. I'd say that's good. That's good. Give it a good shake now. Ma'am, your plate is almost ready. Your food's almost out. We'll have you served in just a second. That'd be great. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love this. Hmm. You're hired. You're hired, she said. You're hired. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Fish, hush puppies, fries. I mean, we got to get DJ's taste test on video for sure. This is the kicker. This is her own secret recipe. It's called Crazy Sauce. Do not... Eat that fish without trying some crazy sauce. Okay. Can't do it. Is it similar to bumps? I can't tell you that. Oh, it's crazy. I've never had it. That was amazing. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm. He said that was the crispiest fish you'll get this side of the levee or so. I don't know, something. Yeah. This side of something. That was delicious. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Houston, you gonna try some fish? Yeah. I'll try this. It looks Leg kind of. Alright. Dip her in the yum sauce or whatever it's called. Crazy sauce. Crazy sauce. Ooh, Crazy hot. Uh-huh. Very well. Crazy sauce. Alright, folks. That tastes like it was swimming this morning. No. That's really good. Really good. Really, really good. All right. Houston's going to give us a good old taste on his frog legs from the frog we didn't think we were ever going to get to eat. Looks like a chicken leg over there. Get the meat. I did. Wow. This is some of the best meat I'll ever like. Some of the best meat you'll ever like, huh? <laughs> so good. Try the chunky part. Look, 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 look. Yeah, you got all the meat hanging off the bone up here. I'm starting at the bottom and then work the way up. Started at the bottom, now he's headed to the top. Saving the best for last. All right, <laughs> all right I can kick it down. Okay, I'll top. Get down. Mm. 
<laughs> Maybe that's why you started at the bottom. And you waited. You tried to wait. Yeah. I'll give you credit. At least you did wait. Wow. That. Wow. <laughs> All right, these boys said they want to try some of this frog leg. Maybe not the one that Houston's been eating on, but yeah, that's the front. That's, yeah. the, that's the front. Here's the here's the back leg right here. You guys eat frog legs? No. No. I know he does. <laughs> <laughs> not according to him. It's good. It's good. What's it taste like? Like fish. Kind of? Like fish. Yeah. I don't know about. Tastes like fish, not to me, but I'd say it's kind of a like fishy, huh? like a fishy chicken. Yeah. Maybe. You like it? I like it. Better than the shrimp taco that you wouldn't eat? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, guys. If you come to St. Bernard, you might not run into Jerry, but you've got to try the fish shack. That's some good fish, isn't it, Houston? Mm hmm. Thank you, Rachel. You might run into me. You <laughs> definitely run, run into right her. Out, like the crazy woman. <laughs> Ooh, Rachel gonna do us right now. Look at here. Fresh. Warm. I'm gonna say she better, but she heated it up. Oh yeah. Hot apple pie. A la mode with ice cream. Mmm. That's not gonna be any good, DJ. You better let me handle that. You're, <clears throat> you probably won't like it. Yeah, she got she she needs to cross the for that. Hey, this is the most important thing. Uh, mm. oh, oh. What were you going to say? This is the most important thing you, you need on this. This is how you eat everything. This. Oh, yeah? That's perfect. Okay. Well, we're going to enjoy our apple pie with mm. some ice cream. In 100 feet, Take a ride on Bourbon Street. I don't know if you realize this or not, but uh, we're not on the creek anymore. <laughs> we're not. We are uh, <clears throat> we're out of our element on Bourbon Street in New Orleans. We're going to find some Cajun food because DJ's a foodie. And we've been scoping out a few restaurants. Notice we're here before dark. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be on Bourbon Street after dark. No. Especially not with this guy. All right, DJ, found the one. Oceana Gumbo Steaks Po' Boys Seafood and Oysters. I'm gonna ask them if they have fish soup. All right, let's see. What do you think? What are you gonna have? Oh, I don't know. Houston's probably gonna be leaning towards a uh, fried fish platter if I had to guess. Would I be wrong? No, it's smoking. I'm not sure what you got there. Are you old enough to drink that, sir? Yes, I am. Don't worry. Non-alcoholic, right? Yeah. That's good. Let's see if I need one. <laughs> I think it's like orange juice with pineapple. That's yum. That's really good. Well, that was quick. All right, so this is supposedly <laughs> flounder Mardi Gras. Golden fried flounder filet stuffed with crab cake and topped with shrimp, crawfish, and Cajun Alfredo sauce served with mustard greens and garlic mashed potatoes. If I doesn't see Cajun food, I don't know what does. And then DJ got some char-grilled oysters. Mm -hmm. What's the thing in the middle? Cornbread? Bread? Yeah, it's bread. There you go. Yep. Let us know how it is. I will. Houston just got some gator bites. Out of all the alligators you've been seeing for the last few days, you decided you need to eat one, huh? Yeah. We'll have to come down here and do an alligator hunt someday. That'd be fun, right? Yeah. So you got, we got half fried, half blackened. Black alligator. Let me know how it is. Taste it. Give me a taste to us. Let's see. Which one first? I don't care. Just let's just taste one. It's okay. <laughs> That's good. I don't know about the stuff. The fish is good. 
stepping I'm on them. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Alright, that was pretty good. It was. It was uh I'm stuffed and now DJ's taking us to this place that's gonna push me over the edge. Yep. I said maybe we get ice cream later. <laughs> Guys. Well, I found an ice cream place. This isn't this is not a normal ice cream place that she found. Well, we're in like, New Orleans. Is there anything normal here? Well, we're a block off Bourbon Street, and it's starting to look normal again. Bourbon Street's wild. Yeah. Like, it's a crazy... We're not even here after dark yet. Yeah. Well, we won't be here after dark, I don't figure, but... No. Um, stand by. We'll sh you'll see what I'm talking about. Oh, my gosh. I like rolling in the cookie dough. That's what I would go for. Or the milkshake and cookies. Or coffee and donuts. Or sweet and salty. I'm not picky. <laughs> I just want one. I just want one. What are we getting, Houston? Campfire s'mores. I say... Campfire s'mores. I don't know. That one's got Rocky Road ice cream. I'm not sure about that. A cow in a tornado is a milkshake. You ever think about that? Looks like somebody took a bite right there. Yeah. There's a reason we only got one. Huh. Yeah. That's uh that's about nine days at the gym. <laughs> Houston. It's excessive. I'm really not sure what I'm supposed to do with this, Houston. I just don't know, so You need to get oh okay. I was gonna say take a picture. Thank you any ice cream. Okay, so technically this is the strawberry cheesecake. Cheesecake, strawberry sauce, white chocolate chips. There's supposed to be some strawberry ice cream somewhere in here, but I'm not, I don't know how you get to it. Very thick. So, I'm not sure if you're supposed to like, you get a bite of cheesecake and then you go in and get some ice cream. I don't, I really don't know the process here. I don't think it matters. You don't think it matters? Mm -hmm. It's pretty impressive. Hey, our, our softball girls need to take some lessons. <laughs> Emily's softball team needs to do that. They, they do that. You know, this city of New Orleans is just totally interesting. It's a totally different culture, totally different world. You know, we've been down here for a few days, you know, fishing and doing everything with Jared from outside the levees, and they're great people, but they live 20 miles outside of New Orleans. But this is not the first time for me to be in New Orleans. This is the New Orleans I remember. I was actually here in 2005 after Hurricane Katrina. I came with the Chickasaw Nation search and rescue team. I was in college. I wasn't a trooper yet. Was, the search and rescue team was like a resume builder thing for me. And I was down here for 10 days, like three or four days after Katrina cleared out. And it was like coming to a third world country. I mean, look at this. We're, I'm not like way off in the middle of nowhere. This is the, a main street that leads down to, to Bourbon Street, but it's crazy. How much of New Orleans hasn't been rebuilt and the things that I've seen over the last few days it's a city in distress I feel like and I don't want to get too far off the main roads because I don't I don't feel comfortable taking my family there but anyways Hurricane Katrina was uh, devastating to this city and this area and this whole economy and I, and I was talking to Jared you know about some of the stuff and the water and everything and the amount of infrastructure it takes for people to even live in this place is it just blows my mind all the levees and things but in that 10 days that i was here during katrina it's the first time i'd ever seen you know dead bodies it was legit the stuff you saw on the news um it was just a fraction of what was going on here we were going door to door through all the neighborhoods and you know marking houses as empty or trying to get people to come out and help them we were with we were stationed down here with the uh national guard so we'd go out on big uh, arm, not armored, but big personnel carrier trucks and do all this crazy 
you know, knocking on doors and trying to figure out if people were home and trying to help people get off their roofs and get out of their houses. And it was, it was crazy. It was just the most eye-opening thing I'd ever experienced as a 21-year-old. There were literally places like this where there'd just be two or three dead bodies, you know. And it, it was a, it was a weird thing seeing what was going on in our country in the united states of america this was america and i felt like i was in some third world country without any kind of government without any kind of control and it was just strange and you know at night it was a good thing we were stationed with the uh the military with the with the national guard because at night we weren't allowed to leave the walmart parking lot where we were camping at or you know sleeping in tents because there was just gunfire down the streets and all the neighborhoods and you know, you, you saw the, the looting and stuff on TV from what was going on with Katrina. But when you, when you were here and you saw people just literally busting down doors and carrying out TVs and carrying out other people's clothes and belongings and not to survive, but just to steal it. It was, it was weird, but it taught me a lot. I learned a lot and it's really weird coming back. You know, that was in Hurricane Katrina was in 2005, almost 20 years ago. And there's so much of this city at least to me it looks like that it has never recovered never been rebuilt and it's just strange I, I don't know i don't know any other way to put it um, i'm very blessed and very thankful for where i live you know in the united states in the in america the freest country that's there ever been but more specifically on our farm on our piece of property in oklahoma it just feels like home i i, I don't know I, i'm thankful and i'm blessed for what i have and being here in this place and seeing things like this that just just everyday life for folks it's normal you know i'm i'm very blessed i'm truly blessed i thank the lord for every one of my blessings all of my family and and you guys for watching our content and allowing us to do what we do it's just i don't know i've had a lot of fun down here but i'm ready to get back to oklahoma i'm ready to get back on the creek ready to get back to the rest of the family emily's going to be home from church camp in a couple days and uh you know on to the next adventure on the creek and with the animals and all that stuff so anyways guys it's been fun in new orleans um outside of new orleans where we've been been doing a lot of the uh the real louisiana stuff i feel like has been a blast and a huge thank you to jared from outside the levees they opened up their home and opened up their family to us and let us come in and just hang out and do the stuff they do so guys be sure to go over and subscribe to them jared's a great guy i've got to know him really well the last few days so Anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.